direct, so I'll get to the point. You stay raw. <laughs> you see, Mr. Komu. Yo, in case you're just joining us, Karibu Sana, this is Good Morning Kenya. I am Jin Boy. We'd absolutely love to know where you're watching us from. So feel free to check in. Use the hashtag Good Morning Kenya on Twitter. Our official station handle ever remains to be at KBC Channel 1 across the socials. My handle is at Jane Wamboy across the socials as well. So we want to move on to this next segment and if just um to men's on a katiza kidogo, you know, testing the waters, <laughs> just to let you know, this conversation is all about the film industry and the progress we've made so far as a country because film is something that we love, but how are we loving it? Are we showing it the love that it deserves as a country? And to help me with this conversation, I have two gentlemen with me gender parity issues out the door <laughs> but it's all good it's all good we have two gentlemen with us in studio to help with this conversation to my extreme right we have Bilal Mora who is an actor in that particular film that we've just run for you we'll be telling you a bit about it in not too long Karibu Sada Shukran sana, Jane. Thank, Thank you for you. making time to be with us. Thank you for having me. All right. Yeah. And to my immediate right, we have Chris Mwara. Where are you, Hey, hey. I'm stuck on your name. I withdraw and apologize. Chris Kamau, who is a former chair of the Kenya Actors Guild, as well as a legendary actor. Good morning. Morning. Karibu sana to the program. Sana sana. Thank you for making time to be with us. Karibu sana and uh, actually thank you for making time to discuss the film sector in Kenya. Thank you, thank you, yeah. thank you. How can guys find you on the social platforms? Uh, just uh, Chris Kamau on Facebook, mm -hmm. on Instagram, basically uh, that's, that's about it. Chris Kamau, yeah, everywhere. Chris Kamau, yeah. Bilal? Mm. Maura Bilal. Mm. Yeah, on Insta, Maura and Bilal on Facebook. All, all mm -hmm. right. You know, it's strange to call you Bilal <laughs> because here, <laughs> our managing director is called Naim Bilal. Mm. So we don't just casually cool call guy, each other. Yeah. Hey, Bilal, <laughs> Sasa. But nonetheless, uh, welcome again to the program. We just want to get sure. to understand how the journey has been for you individually, mm -hmm. building up to that beautiful uh, film. But just looking at that trailer running random places across the country, how does that make you feel? Let me start with you, Bilal. Uh, it gives me joy. Yeah. It gives me joy that what we are doing is actually being appreciated. Mm -hmm. And for me, the fact that most of the viewers that have watched Uradi yes. are Kenyans, that gives me even more joy. Yeah. Good stuff. And what of you, Chris? You know, just looking also at your journey, getting to where you are today, this beautiful project that is now crossing borders. <laughs> Every actor always likes to feel appreciated. Yeah. And the support that we've got for Radi, uh, not just from Kenya, but even the, the diaspora mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of other sectors has been uh, quite overwhelming. Um, uh, people, they love the movie. They say it's uh, very relevant. Yes. They say that it deals with uh, very contemporary issues. Mm. The fact that uh, a large population of the country, especially the youth, is struggling to make, uh, to make ends meet. And uh, when you get an opportunity, like uh, his character, Komu, gets um at least his strength of character was able to see him through mm. there are very many others who would have seen it as an easy avenue to um get rich quick mm. you see yeah so it's the very relevant absolutely yeah. and just taking a step back looking at the film industry as a whole i mean we have come so far we need to acknowledge the fact that we have progressed as a country but let me come back to you Bilal. you know Looking at your individual journey yeah. from the time you entered the film space, um, of course, we all start from an amateur point of standing, exposure in Aquilipa, getting yeah. to where you are today. How would you say, as a country, how have we progressed looking at your individual journey? Uh, looking back on my journey, I must say the space has grown mm -hmm. tremendously. I started performing in 2007. Uh, school set texts. Mm. I am. I have done set more books. theatre. Yes, I've actually done more theatre than film. Yeah. I am. A, I like to call myself a died in the wool theatre rat. All right. <laughs> and over that period, there has been. It's become more vibrant. Uh -huh. We have so many productions out there. We have more people coming into the industry. And for me, one of the most beautiful things about it is that with that growth has come a shift, a paradigm shift, mm -hmm. even to some parents, not all, to some parents. Uh, there are some parents who, when their children tell them now they want to venture into the arts, they are like, okay, because they can see, because 
uh, we are human seeing is believing seeing is so believing. so yes it has grown really really tremendously good stuff yeah. and i like that you have mentioned you know moving from looking at the stage theater and now coming to this film space that we are in that seemingly more people appreciate but we'll be coming to that yeah. but also just looking at your journey mm. um the different stages that you have found yourself in the films that you have found yourself in looking at your individual journey from when you started the challenges you were facing back then mm. and today how has that staircase been like well uh i would say that today they take the what they call the creative economy mm -hmm. more seriously they've seen that it's an avenue that can uh, generate revenue even for the national gdp yes uh, this year being an election year, mm. there's going to be a lot of crossovers between the, the creative economy and politics. All of a sudden, politicians are going to be very concerned about the welfare of artists. <laughs> and uh, promises, so, uh, promises, <laughs> promises are going to be made. Um, uh, policies are going to be initiated yes. that have not yet uh, been uh, you know, qualified or quantified. Mm -hmm. And uh, I must say, uh, I would like to actually give a very special thanks to Kenya Broadcasting Corporation. Because what a lot of people don't know is that uh, Uradi, actually showed on KBC yeah. Yes. twice yeah yeah it, even before it went on to Netflix yeah, twice. and now with the platform such as uh, Netflix coming in I mean the other day I, I, I'm very happy to say that I can sit now with you and I can sit with Bilal and I can say have you watched 40 sticks mm -hmm. it's on Netflix have you watched Radi? It's, it's on, on Netflix. Netflix have you watched the girl with the yellow jumper it's a Ugandan movie but yeah. that's yeah. also Netflix we can mm -hmm. sit down and discuss as an industry we're actually growing because um, where Netflix is, <coughs> Amazon won't be too, too far behind, yeah. Disney Plus won't be too, uh, too far behind. And as long as we can generate the content and we have the capacity, because that's an issue that we have in this country. Because yes. like, um, if, uh, let's say, Hollywood wanted to shoot like about five major productions, unfortunately, we could not be able to handle it. Mm. And he knows why. Because the sets that we go on, we always meet the same lighting people. The same mm -hmm. sound people, so we actually have to build that capacity in uh, the various aspects of the industry so that we can actually be able to take it to the next level. And yeah. speaking of capacity, that now brings us to the human resource aspect of it mm -hmm. and in terms of building our skills and because I mean, we, it's not that we lack talent, but mm -hmm. we just don't have the capacity to develop that talent as part of this, um, the value chain. Mm -hmm. What do you think can be done to just make sure that even the actors that get to present these plays, um, from the theaters to the film that we get to see, they are actually delivering and giving quality performances? Quality performances. Yeah. That's it. That, that uh, when you're watching a, a production, yeah. you shouldn't even know that the person is acting. Yeah. That's the thing, yeah. <laughs> because uh, we tend to take it as, unfortunately, we have a system whereby, and this actually stems by, right to the, the, the drama festivals and all that mm. kind of thing. The more melodramatic you are, the more you're... Considered a, 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 to be. <laughs> exactly, considered to be an actor. Yeah. And there's a difference. Yes. Because, like, stage is bigger than, uh, than screen. Because mm. on the screen, you have to bring everything down because the camera captures your emotions, everything. So, uh, you have but to uh, exactly. It all. Like, on stage, even a stage whisper is like, hey. <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah. So we have to, to have a capacity to train our actors mm -hmm. in uh, both stage and in screen. And for them to realize that uh, acting is just heightened life. Um, you know, because th that business of... Uh, <sighs> Uh, you don't need that kind of thing. I you know. Just, you don't, you don't, you don't, <laughs> <laughs> I'm you glad you're the one who's giving the example. You can just be and, and, and it'll, it'll capture everything. Yeah. And also the fact that um, <coughs> actors are, and I don't say this, say this with any conceit, I say mm -hmm. this with a lot of humility. Yeah. But actors are very intelligent people. Why? Mm -hmm. Because we have to embody the characters of different people. So we actually have to do our homework. For Bilal to become Komu, uh, he should not just told you're, you're fantastic, you're a talented actor, mm, you're yeah. Komu, good actor. here's your script. Shika. Exactly. If Bilal is a very good actor, he will get his script, he will go home, he will look at the character of Komu, and he'll begin to break down Komu. Who is Komu? Mm -hmm. Does, is Komu an orphan? Does he have sisters? Does he have brothers? What, all that kind of thing. Yeah. That's going to build up his character. Mm. So by the time the camera is rolling, what the director actually wrote for Komu and what he brings out are going to be such so different, uh, you know, different aspects yeah. that even the, the person actually who wrote the script is going to be like, whoa, I never saw it from that angle. So now if you can surprise the people who've actually mm -hmm. done that, what about the audience? When you embody the character exactly. completely. Yeah, exactly. And I'd also love to hear from you, Bilal, still looking at that aspect of building our actors to understand when it comes to the delivery of it all, that's where the gold is, you know, how you do it, quality. Yeah, what Chris said cannot be again.
they said um, training mm. training and guidance mm. we really in the absence of proper acting schools in Kenya we do we have any I said proper <laughs> qualified <laughs> it. Um, in the absence of that we really need we really need I feel like we need sort of incubation centers mm. just places where upcoming actors or those who are not as experienced mm. can meet with experienced actors and they can pass on that knowledge because it's there's a gap there is a gap you go on some sets and it's sad you find someone being wrapped on the same day mm -hmm. they come they've been given a script because they and also there's that system that we need to change as an industry. Mm. Please give actors their scripts, mapema, you know. <laughs> as if I'm you know. okay. Yeah, because you find someone has come on set ill-prepared. Yeah. Mm. One, it could be because they are inexperienced. They don't, know, they don't really know what extra they need to put in mm -hmm. on top of what they've been given on the script. And you find someone, the director says, yo, this is not a training yeah, space. Exactly, you exactly. Know? And yeah. it's You're supposed true. to have come prepared. Yeah. 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 And you see someone lose their opportunity just like that. And mm -hmm. it could have taken maybe just a few hours with an experienced actor mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. in a space where they get these extra skills. So it is really, really, really important that we find a way even as yeah. practitioners yeah. to, you know, guide those coming up. All right, but mm. before we even find that way, looking at the space that we are in right now, the realistic situation of things yeah. where the most effective way would be the transfer of skills from those that have been there longer onto the younger um, and up-and-coming actors, how can we also get um, the more experienced ones to just come on the table and say, by the way, I understand it's hard, but even Dokunaindanga, but at the same time, <laughs> understand that they also have their own fair share of scripts to master yeah. and Productions to fulfill. Here's the thing. Um, um, to be very, very, very honest. Yes. I have been on some sets <coughs> whereby, when certain actors turn up on set, um, you see the, the director is like, ah, this is going to be a breeze because these guys they know what they know, they, what they they're, know doing. they're doing exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I've been on sets where, like they see the people and like you know because Somebody. this is it. As much as uh, some of us are willing to mentor mm. and to teach and pass on the knowledge. The people that we're willing to mentor and to teach and pass knowledge on to must be willing to receive, mm. to accept, and to learn. The problem with a lot of actors today is that everybody thinks that they know everything, and they don't. You see? Exactly. Exactly. Because every set that I've been on, and I've been privileged to be with the likes of uh, Raymond Ofula and all that, I always garner knowledge from Raymond. I garner knowledge from uh, Bilal. I'm willing, I'm, I'm open, so I'm able to receive. Mm -hmm. I don't know it all. I can never claim to know it all. I may know a little bit, uh, a little bit more than some. But um, the problem that we have, even in the, with the youth today, is, uh, and, and we saw it the other day, even when, um, unfortunately, the British government wanted to hire uh, healthcare professionals. Yes. And out of 300, only 10. Imagine. Qualified. You know, we saw that in uh, yeah. the because, oh. because of what? <laughs> because they speak what? Proper English. Yes. Now, this thing of, uh, as much as Sheng is a national language, because you speak proper English, you're looked down upon, or whatever mm -hmm. it is. No, it's a skill. It's a, you know, you went to school. You that's that's what you do, and you can see there was a direct people Group actually lost an opportunity yeah. because they could not express themselves. As much as you're fantastic in your sciences and in mathematics and all that, if you cannot express yourself there, you know, that's an issue. Yes. So you, the youth actually has to learn how to be able to open up, mm -hmm. to be able to read. Actors do a lot of research. In fact, there's something that we do whenever we receive a script. And whatever is written over there, there's something called subtext. Because mm -hmm. what is written over there is not actually what, what is written over there. He knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not there. It's just there. Exactly. But it's not there. Exactly, yeah. So, so you need to find out what is, what is, what is act this actually about. Mm -hmm. Because um, there's an acting exercise that, uh, that people do in certain uh, areas. And what they do is that um, whenever you're going over a script, busy yourself doing something else because in life we don't just do the words mm, basically sit there and do them. exactly exactly so busy, busy yourself doing something else okay and you won't be you won't believe it but um because you're using both the right brain and the left brain it captures it captures everything mm -hmm. so if you're going to parrot everything you will never ever be a good actor if you don't do the homework you, you can't be a lazy actor yeah you cannot sadly you, you cannot be no you can't it'll show Yep. It actually shows. Sometimes they're watching something and they're like, ah, mm. this person knows their lines very well. Because they do. They, they do know their lines. And yes. you can see that uh, they're <laughs> remembering the words and all that. But they're not delivering the performance. 
Meanwhile, you can watch something, and I mean, there's some very, very good actors, amazing actors. And when you see their work, you're like, whoa, you can see this person actually did the work. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what we need to do here in, in Kenya. Because um, Bilal told you his, uh, his strength is, uh, is, on, is on stage. Mm -hmm. And uh, the thing with stage actors is, um, first of all, just the nature of the stage, the nature of being in theatre, um, you become very disciplined. Because in order for a show to start at 6 p.m., Bilal has to be here by, I think you're called, 4.15? 4.30. 4.30. Yeah, is what they call the, 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 the call time. The call time, yeah. Yes, it's 4.30 latest. 30 latest. For the show, they're starting at six. Yeah. Because now Bilal has to get into the character. Mm. He has to get into the zone. It's In a fact, whole uh, it is a process. In fact, between, the, between that 4.30 and 6, I can't even talk to him. I shouldn't even be allowed to be near him because he's supposed to be now processing the character mm -hmm. and who he is. And then also, um, you know, there's things like uh, rehearsals, you know, getting there on time, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. And uh, where they take these things very seriously and professionally, is uh, if Bilal is meant to be there at 4.15 and he turns up, he turns up at 4.30, they, they dock some of his pay. They, they find him. Oh. Yeah, because it's, it's a profession. Acting is a profession. It's not a hobby. It's not a by the way. Or some people say, ah, we jumped wrong when Malaysia truly the other day. Mm. Uh, what have we done there? And that's what I also want to hear from you, Bilal. Looking at that professionalism aspect of it all, because yeah. people just consider film as a source of entertainment. Yeah, and that's mm. as far as it goes. It's not an office that I have to wake up and go to from 8 to 5. Mm. Time is not something that, you know, see, Takuari. <laughs> Yeah. What we see on the screen is not what is actually behind the scenes. When it comes to professionalizing the industry and starting with you as the actor, the yeah. producer, the director. Yes, it has to start with you as the, as the actor because mm. you have to take it as seriously as anyone else takes their job. Mm. Um, I am an actor. I need to know what is needed from me. I need to know what, what skill set I need to have. And it, it's, it, it all goes down to preparation. Yes. And that discipline, that discipline, especially in the creative industry, it's harder to harness that discipline because you do not have a boss mm. calling you, <laughs> uh, why haven't you recorded? You know, the period uh, when between shoots, what are you doing between shoots as an mm -hmm. actor? You left this set, you could be at home or doing other things for even six months or whatever amount of time. What are you doing to improve yourself? And there's something interesting Chris said, okay. reading. Yeah. Mm. Actors, I always say, I, I personally read more than I watch. And this is the reason. As an actor, yes, you can learn by watching, by watching other actors do their thing. Mm -hmm. However, that thing Chris talked about, mm. subtext, mm -hmm. You won't, you will not see, you, you, you will see it. If you understand it, you will know it. Yeah. However, you will watch Chris in Uradi, uh, maybe that point before he does that <laughs> stunt move. <laughs> if you watch him, you, y there's nothing to tell. That What's really, coming? Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. nothing, totally mm -hmm. nothing, zero. Mm -hmm. so why? Because he has settled in his character. And mm -hmm. to you, for you to settle in your character, there's so much more you have to bring. Back to reading. When you read, say, fiction, mm. a, a proper, properly written novel, say someone is in a situation where they feel uh, they, they are almost having a panic attack. On screen, you will see the panic attack, or maybe <laughs> a bit, a bit yeah. of the Pick build. Up. Up. Yeah. 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 Mm. But when you read a book, it will explain everything. It will explain the emotion sometimes from the twitching of a toe mm -hmm, up, mm -hmm. up, up to mm -hmm. when now we see it. If you do not have that as an actor, if mm -hmm. you don't know all that, you'll just get your lines and become a talking head actor, exactly. which is not what exactly. we want. Yeah. Oh, you know your lines. Oh, yeah. Round the lines. table. Exactly. Lines need yeah. <laughs> percentage. Is, I don't know. Uh, lines should be should con get them out of the way so yeah. that it, it's not an an issue. Lines should not be an issue. Mm. Yeah, it's not, the acting is not in the lines. Mm. It is not it should, in the You lines. should understand it to a point where you can do even without the lines. Yes. And so to just do it your own way. You'd be surprised because actually, uh, if you actually know your character and your yeah. script and your lines very well, um, acting is very organic. So even if it says in the script, uh, say this line is whatever, and he stands up and gets up and goes to the window, if you know that character and you internalize it and you identify with the character, mm -hmm. 
you might not feel the need to get up and go to the window. Why? Because you can even question the director and say, uh, "Why am I?" It doesn't it, make, it does, sense, doesn't, make yeah. doesn't make any sense. Okay. But you'll only get that fact the in point if you know the script. Once you understand. If you know the character. Okay. Once you understand, and then also actors as well. There's one, one problem that we have here with a lot with a lot of actors. Huh? When they hire you as an actor, they hired you because you're a professional. It's very simple. Don't get on a set and you don't know your lines. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's crazy. Because <laughs> I think it's good that it comes from you yeah. in the, um, the space. Yeah. Don't get on a set and you don't know your lines because that's why they hired you. It's very simple. When you get on set, so I'm telling you, I've been on sets where they, they see certain people that are like, ah, this is going to be easy. Because, by the way, acting is one of those uh, uh, situations or industries whereby time is actually money mm. literally quite literally literally yeah. literally yeah. why because uh, i might be a producer who's trying to cut corners and um, mm. I, <laughs> I i i say because i won't have let, 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 let me let me get a generator and then kplc does what kplc does mm. for two days for, so. now <laughs> now imagine now the thing is this if you don't have a generator mm. and you're supposed to wait for a power comes back at about four o'clock you're gonna lose light at like seven mm. you have to shoot those scenes so now because you tried to save on 5k or 6k you're now going to another day that's what catering okay that's uh, Trans that's transport, transport that's whatever so exactly so just get that. the generator okay let it be on standby no people know their lines um you know basically uh this is a, this is a very humble appeal yeah it's uh, something that a lot of uh, filmmakers do in this country mm. and that is when you arrive on set they expect you also to have your own wardrobe which is your personal clothing and that's mm. something that's very that that's kind of like very unfair because really please i'm bringing my services you know you also do, also do your part yes. the least that you can do is you know meet me let, let's meet each other at some point yes yeah basically all right yeah now still looking at that aspect of now the whole loopholes we've already gotten there mm. as a um just flowing with the conversation and that also comes with um the fact that you mentioned cutting corners while in the production process mm. because um and we can see at, in the final product you can see maybe in this particular film the lighting was bad looking when you investigate you find out again they didn't get the proper lighting for this particular scene or this particular venue that they were at mm -hmm. and also comes in the aspect of cutting corners in getting um good the cast because mm. that it contributes a lot to the quality of that whole production yeah, yeah. because I could give you this role and in one way or the other it doesn't embody who you are is that part of the journey of what you get to experience given a character that you can say okay um, this is good but I feel so and so would be better hmm? yeah, uh, has that ever happened it's tricky uh, <laughs> yes um, as an actor you must find that connection with your character. Mm -hmm. You must find that connection with your character. I have dropped a script before, but I haven't dropped a script because yet because I had I I didn't find that connection. Ah, the with connection my with the character you've but been given. But it is extremely important if you mm -hmm. really do not feel it. If you don't, uh, I was talking to Isaiah Evans the other day, one a casting director, and he told me if you feel it when you're acting, maybe the audience will feel it. Mm -hmm. Maybe. And he, he, it was a very long maybe. Mm. <laughs> and that's it, because you, it has to be in you first. And yes, uh, we have instances of um, miscast. But yeah, it, if a producer is cutting corners because they do not want to pay Chris Kamau, his that's wife. That's the other aspect, yeah. Like, wife, I'll get a cheaper option. Yeah, then <laughs> just digging their you own pay peanuts, you get and monkeys. getting somebody yeah, who's not exactly. <laughs> you pay peanuts, you get money. You know, you know it, you you're just you digging your own yeah. grave. You just dig. Why are you doing it? Why are you in this, in, All right. in this sector? Why? Why? What is your why? All there's, right. there's a popular misconception that um, certain actors are outside of certain brackets mm -hmm. this is not uh, true by the way yeah man. every can't actor them. no every actor can be negotiated with yes. yeah because every actor feels that they're alive when they're in front of a camera yes that's what people don't don't realize say oh get uh, bilal ah no oh, chris come on no 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 who told you Ooh, yo. mm -hmm. get the person mm -hmm. have that conversation negotiate because i can tell you like now uh denzel washington he gets paid like maybe what 10 or 11 million dollars a picture but if he believes in a project that Bilal has, mm. he might say, look, you just raised $20,000 and, uh, you know, I'm I'll game. do it. 
Yeah, but you won't know this unless you have a conversation, mm -hmm. you know? And, and this is something that uh, Kenyan producers need to understand and yeah. realize. Don't listen to rumors. Don't listen. Get to the person themselves. Yeah. He say he does yeah, not. Yeah, he is not. No. You'll be very surprised. You mean to say, but I heard that you, you heard. Cool yeah. then. Yeah. <laughs> you heard from who? <laughs> All right. So don't yeah. cut corners and get inexperienced persons to work on a film that clearly they will do a disservice. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Now let's flip the conversation and come to the Kenyan population. Mm. Um, we are growing the screening culture, but we are still not yet there. Why do you think this is so? Um, not many Kenyans will wake up and go, I think the, 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 the actual the crux of the matter there lies in the fact that a lot of films are made with the intention to make the movie, mm -hmm. to get it done, to get it into theaters, and to attract audiences. What they don't uh, take into consideration is that part of your budget, actually quite a huge part of your budget should be marketing. Publicity and marketing. Yes. Uh, when Black Panther was made, uh, I understand there was like about $400 million was just set aside for marketing. You see, now, the, the, because basically, um, the thing is, like for instance, um, like I said, Oradi was first on, Kenya Broadcasting Corporation, mm. twice before anywhere else. Premiered. Okay, yeah. before, it, before it premiered anywhere else. Mm. Now, when it premiered on Netflix, it was like, uh, I think the number one movie. Trending, um, in, trend, Kenya, trending, yeah. trending in Kenya, that kind of thing. Um, how I got to know about a movie like The Girl with the Yellow Jumper is because somebody told me, uh, and I saw you know, social, on social media, have you watched this movie by Lukman Ali, whatever it is, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So that in itself is some kind of marketing and uh, publicity. I word believe, of mouth. yes, if you get the word, if you get the word of mouth, and, and also that, because Kenyans do want to watch our content. I mean, there's a movie called Nafsi that has mm -hmm. been in theaters now, what, almost nine, nine weeks? Six, almost nine weeks now, mm -hmm. you see? Um, then over, the, over the, the, the Christmas holidays, there was what I think is the first uh, Kenyan Christmas movie, a movie called Christmas Love, yes, made by yes. Peter Kawa. And I think at last, it was like 50,000 yes. views or something like that. So it's not that people don't want to watch, it's mm -hmm. do they want to watch what you've put out there? Another movie called Medicine Man that was made by a gentleman called Eddie Jomoniki mm -hmm. in Embu. It's in Kabisa, a full Embu movie, yeah? You see? Now, is, is, is it going to attract, for number one, the people from Embu? Are they, you know, that should be a test. When, when you screen it in that side, was, were the theaters you know, packed capacity? Before even subtitle national, the national stage. Yes. So basically, the thing is, if you come up with a quality product, people will want to watch. People will, wa will want to actually go into the theaters and view. And maybe we can be able to grow our, our, culture, mm -hmm. uh, our culture that way. So a bigger chunk of the responsibility still is on the crew, the whole the team, creatives. to ensure creatives. the creatives, yes, uh, yes. that's more appropriate, yeah. yes. the creatives to just make sure that they also get their word out to the people. Exactly. All right. Yeah. Do you share the same thoughts? 100%. Mm. Yeah, because we cannot sit back and expect the people mm. to just lap up whatever is out there. And complain they're not coming. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, without any, without any in, intention, intended uh, push or drive to, to make them do that. Uh, Kenyans are hungry for good, for quality Kenyan products. Mm. Yes. They are, they are, they are. So it's upon us to make sure that we let them know where to find them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good stuff. Now, let's come to Oradi. And maybe, Mr. Director, would you kindly just prepare the trailer for us once more <laughs> before we get to that? But let me come, let me start with you, Bilal. When they presented this, um, I don't know how that conversation went. Yeah. If you're comfortable sharing, you can. But when this uh, character and this project was proposed to you, what was your immediate reaction? Uh, when Nice Gedenji, the, who was the help to the casting, when she called me and told me Kangede Mungai is doing a film, a feature, and he would like you to be part of it. At first I was like, a feature, okay, aha, uh -huh. hmm. feature, okay, <laughs> a feature. <laughs> well, I will not lie, I was a bit... Uh, ish, 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 ish. <laughs> Komsi, komsa. At the beginning, komsi, komsa. <laughs> over here, over yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for a number of reasons. Yes. One, I was in a space where I wasn't very trusting of people in the industry. Mm, from uh, based on previous experiences. Yeah, based on previous experience right. and, you know, based on you hear things mm. and you meet people and here. So at first I was, mm, let me see. And then we had a meeting, the three of us, here at the Kenya National Theatre. There's a space called The Office. Uh, 
So we had a meeting. We had a meeting, and after that first meeting, then I told him, okay, is it possible that I read the script first without yes. before I say yes or no? Which is something, and he, he said yes, which is something amazing because just letting yeah. someone have your script. Yeah, mm. you need to sign an NDA first. Yeah, <laughs> you know, without an NDA, without that, that level of trust also, yeah. then told me, okay, maybe. I read the script and fell in love with it. And I was like, okay, fine. We're doing this. Let's do this. All right. After reading the script, mm -hmm. that's when I said yes. What about your first interaction with the whole Oradi concept? How well, was that? Actually, uh, a very nice lady called Nice Greenji mm. actually uh, got, no in touch, uh, <laughs> <laughs> got in touch with me. Yes. And uh, basically, I, I guess I guess because we had uh, we had worked uh, previously with her on a few other projects. You know, the thing is with uh, with actors, actors tend to know their fellow actors. Mm. So, like, I might uh, be in a situation whereby even the casting director is looking for a particular character, and he'll ask me, "Do you know someone?" And I say, "Yeah, that's that, that, that sounds to me like that." Bil Bilal can do that kind of thing. Mm. You see, and so when uh, I saw the character of uh, Rashid. And uh, for some very strange reason, I I always get cast as these terrible, <laughs> terrible. <laughs> we want a why. Just negative individuals, we want you know. A so, and they're like, yeah, get Chris Kamal. That's Chris Kamal, you know. <laughs> so when I when I saw it and yes. I read it, I said, uh, okay, uh, this is good. Uh, I had interacted with Kangede before mm -hmm. because of uh, being in uh, the chair of Kenya Actors Guild. We sat on uh, a few creative economy related uh, concerns yes. together. And uh, Kangen is actually very, very active in Riverwood. Uh, and, and in fact, um, uh, it's very interesting that um, uh, a project like uh, Uradi, which has been made by Kikwetu Productions, which is basically Riverwood, is now on, yeah. on, on Netflix. On Netflix. <laughs> you see? Yes. It has kind of like uh, leapfrogged all the other not Riverwood, not Riverwood productions. Um, but um, so when I, I got to be able to read the character, I, I like the character because I'll tell you something about villains is mm. they have very they have very many layers mm. you know good guys this guy this is a good guy and just you boom know this he is, a is good, good guy. yeah but villains you, and and when you when you're given the role of a villain and you do your homework you need to do your homework and go back and say why did this guy maybe he was a, a an altar boy or something and mm, something at some happened point. at some point in time why did this guy become so negative you see yes and that's exactly and that's exactly what I did. And actually, it even amazed me when I was playing that character. I was like, "It's, it's, it's, a, it's a very wrong, it's a very wrong person." But uh, <laughs> yeah, I, but, but I like it. I like it. Ha, yeah. But I have to be you. Oh, definitely. Yeah. That, that, especially that scene whereby I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you really owned it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, Mr. Director. Um, trailer iko tayari ama una semaji? Tuendele kidogo. Ah, Ikotari. Let's get to watch the trailer okay. once more before mm. we come back and talk a bit uh, more about it. Mm. I understand. It's first time jitters, okay? It happens yeah. to everyone. Ibis is on its own. It's up. <laughs> Starting with just the name, I love the name because it is very Kenyan, you know. Mm. It's a word that every Kenyan can relate to, can at least understand, you know, mm. something that every Kenyan can loosely use. But let me come, let me start with you, Bilal, just looking at your character in this particular film. For those who haven't gotten to watch it, what is it about? Very briefly, he compressed no one uh, can watch. No, but you're spoilers. <laughs> okay, Choma. No, uh, no uh, Uradi is the story of a young, impressionable man mm -hmm. from Nyahururu who comes to Nairobi with the aim of pursuing an education but gets swayed from his goal by worldly things. Mm. Yeah. Mambo ya dunia. 
<laughs> what of you? What's your take for those who haven't watched it? What would you like to tell them about the film? Um, first of all, it's, uh, it's got suspense, it's got action, mm -hmm. it's got uh, humor. Um, it's very Kenyan in that you recognize quite a few of the of the, of the actors yes. who are there, and even the even the locations. And uh, something about Kenya is it, it films very well. It films very well. How's that so? Uh, I don't know. It's just like when you're watching a movie and you see like Nairobi. It's it's. I guess it's because we're a very blessed nation. Mm -hmm. um, because Kenya is, the, is, is a filmmaker's dream, within 45 minutes of flight time, you're either by the sandy shores, mm. your uh, snow-capped mountains, the, the desert, the highlands, that kind of thing. So it's, it's, it's like a, a world in one country of, of, of locations. Mm. And then uh, also, I would say that um, watch it with an open mind, especially now, like I said, because we're in, in, in an election period, you will see some of the things that uh, can lure young people yes. to to go to go astray mm. and get involved in activities or engagements that are not very beneficial to society as a whole um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> individually beneficial you see yes. and uh, the struggles that uh, he undergoes you know coming from um, Nyauru to the city and uh, the trials and the tribulations and the temptations mm. and uh, the fact that um, he brings a considerable uh, you know a part of his life with him into into the city mm -hmm. and it's actually that part of his life from out there that stabilizes him when he's over here mm. because uh, there are a lot of distractions yes i would say all right yeah <laughs> Aba una mta mini tumia text na nasema um, kwanza yu pate nye likosa pesa ya kulifa lunch. <laughs> <laughs> they can relate with that at some point or the one or the yeah. other. Uh -huh. Now, for those who are going to watch this film moving forward, what's the take home that you want them to learn, not just from your character, but from the whole project? Let's watch it because you'll enjoy it. Mm -hmm. First thing... It's a very entertaining movie. Yes. Before you come back down to the themes and the lessons in it, it will keep you glued. Mm. From this is what I'm getting a lot from people. It's like that opening scene. Mm -hmm. That means it <laughs> hooks them. And for me, especially that opening scene is very special because we shot it in uh, Odaya on the banks of River Gura, yeah. which is the fastest flowing river in Africa. I knew that through Kangede Mongai, the director. I didn't mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. And the, the texture, the texture that environment gives the film, like what Chris said, Kenya is a blessed land. Mm -hmm. If you yeah. watch mm -hmm. Uradi, we shot it in, I think, five counties. You can see, you can see that change, that the terrain tried, change, the uh, boat yeah, ride. Exactly, there. Yeah. We were in the semi-desert mm. areas in Machakos, mm. on the lush green nannies of uh, Central Province. Mm. It Look at you getting it's carried away. Nah, it's just beautiful. <laughs> you need beautiful to see piece. it to really understand yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. All right, there's also um, Devi who say, Guy Kumbe, he's Kenyan, now referring to Chris. <laughs> oh, yes, he did say, he didn't give his nannies well. You, his you introduction know, was muted. Hey. It was very bad. Need to to start with. Yeah, only, yeah, Chris, yeah, yeah. Out, yes, he's Kenyan. <laughs> but I'm sure this is something that has happened uh, before. Yeah. Do people mistake uh, your nationality? Yes, especially because uh, one of the characters I'm very well known for playing is actually somebody who's uh, a character called Okonko mm. from uh, Nigeria. Naja. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And also yeah. just. Um, for everyone is going to watch this yeah. film, what would you like to take with them? Um, as just even if it's just one thing, if it's about to enjoy the music, the cast, the scenery, what is it that you would love whoever is going to interact with this film to just take on with them? Well, uh, I know that uh, one of the key things I'd like them to do is uh, when you watch the movie. Mm -hmm. um, First of all, get, get, get share word with your friends that it's on Netflix. Um, it's also very important for us to be able to grow this industry. Also, subscribe. Yeah. Subscribe to Netflix. Get the numbers up because when people like Netflix see the numbers, they say, "Oh, good, we have a, an, an a regional market." So if we, we get like more content this. from here, mm. uh, it's going to also grow us as a nation and the creative economy. And like I always say, uh, the thing with the Kenya is when you're shooting for the Kenyan audience or the Kenyan market, you're actually shooting for about uh, seven countries. 
Why do I say this? Because of the East African community. Mm. Um, we and are, Kenya being a hub. Exactly. We're okay. English speaking. We're Kiswahili speaking yes. as well. And uh, basically, you, you, you've got Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi, DRC, South Sudan, all, all, all that kind of thing. And because uh, Kenya has uh, this um, sort of like, uh, we have the talent base. We have the resources. Uh, because what people don't know is that uh, when you watch something like uh, Oradi and a few other projects that are going to be coming up later on this year, mm -hmm. is not only were they filmed in Kenya uh, using Kenyan actors, but even the people behind, people who did the sound, who did the post-production, all that kind of thing, whereby they used to say, okay, let's shoot in Kenya, but let it go for edit in yes, South yes, Africa yes. or to mm -hmm. India. Or whatever. No, you don't do that. They're, they're now, we, have, and post we have full post-production houses. Good stuff. Uh, we have everything that you need yes. is here. All right. The only problem is, like I said, yeah. we need to build capacity. Building capacity. Yeah. Again, going to everyone who has a role to play in the value chain. Exactly. All right. Now, due to the constraint of time, my directors <laughs> tell me we are overrunning. Right. But thank you so much, gentlemen, for being with us. You're Already welcome. is thank up you. on Netflix. Mm -hmm. um, if you go to our website, if you to put a trailer, hapo itakombe Nishanini tena, KVC. Hey. But nonetheless, thank you so much for being with us. We have been speaking with Bilal Mora, who is an actor, as well as Chris Kamau, who is also an actor. Not Chris Mora and Bilal. Come on. <laughs> now you see you're confusing me. I'm like, did I say that right? <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Both of them are in uh, part of the cast on Oradi. So go ahead and watch. When we say watch Kenya, build Kenya, support Kenya, it starts with something like this. So much for being with us. On behalf of the crew, we want to say um, have a lovely day. Be sure to join us again next week right here on Good Morning Kenya. I am General Boy. Do enjoy the rest of your viewing.